All right, a really short sermon. Intro will be longer than this sermon. I want to get your mind in the right place before I tell you what I got to say. Now, this, this past year, the NFL had a rookie named Odell Beckham Jr. And he made a most remarkable catch. He was falling down backwards into the end zone. He'd been fouled on the play, and he reached back over his head with one hand and caught the football with one hand while he's falling backwards. We found out later, there's actually videos of him practicing that. He said, well, I wanted to be ready for whatever might happen in the game. All right, so what's the point? Well, let me give you another example where I'm headed. You ever been in one of those situations where you needed a snappy comeback and it came to you five minutes later? <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. You know, man, I could have really, really nailed him with that one. Too bad, too late, so sad. Ever watch one of those comedians, uh, comics, you know, the stand-up, improv kind of guy, live audience, and somebody starts heckling him and he just tears him to shreds? Well, of course, because he's practiced it. I don't care what you think you're coming up with that's new. That stand-up comic's probably got something ready just for you. Because that's his profession. This football player, that was his profession. And he practiced. So Christians, are you with me? Practice makes perfect. That's the title of this sermon. So no doubt you're saying, well, I always try and be a good person. I always try and do the right thing. That's not what I'm talking about. Because that just isn't enough, people. When, when a the Bible says that your language should be filled with God. We think, as Christians, we tend to think, well, that means I need to be a nice, pleasant person. I think you need to take it to another level. I've said this before. When you say goodbye to someone, why don't you, instead of saying goodbye, why don't you strike that out of your vocabulary and start saying, God bless. Why don't you take Gesundheit out of your vocabulary and say, God bless you. When someone says, how you doing, instead of saying fine, why don't you learn how to say, by the grace of God, you know, I'm feeling blessed. When someone says good morning to you, why don't you learn how to say good morning and God bless you on this day? That's when your language is filled with God. I like to say when somebody says it's a good day, you know, when we're sitting around having ridden our motorcycle someplace, somebody says it's a good day for a ride, I say I praise God for a good day to ride. One day, one guy said, you know, it's all rainy. He says, leans back in his chair, looks over towards me and says, it's a miserable wet day to ride. And I smiled and I leaned back and I said, well, praise God for a miserable wet day to ride because we need the rain 
and it keeps the, the wusses off the road. <laughs> and everyone just laughed. <clears throat> when the Bible says give to others, do you practice that? Do you carry some money in your wallet that's in a special place that's just to give to somebody that needs it? Whoa. When the preacher says you should write your tithe check first, do you practice that? He's not talking symbolically. Well, maybe he is, but he shouldn't be. <laughs> But you know, it's more than just putting some money in an offering plate. When the Bible says give to others, how do you know who to give to? Unless you learn to see them. You got to practice seeing them. You've got to see them in their need and it isn't always obvious. somebody that's a part of a group and the group decides to go out to eat once a month and they find excuses not to go or maybe when they go they just have a you know a piece of toast and a glass of water hello that's like a flag I can't afford to do this but I want to be with my friends now, here's the tough part. <laughs> you got to learn how to practice talking to people, not right in front of everyone, and finding a way to get them to accept a gift from you that will let them enjoy a meal with everyone else. And it probably isn't, hey, just give me another check. Unless maybe you do, hey, waitress, would you give me everyone's check today? <laughs> but you got to talk him into it first. That's just one example. But do you notice people? Their manner? their nonverbals, their behaviors. <clears throat> By the way, that one came from somebody else, so did this next one. Somebody was telling me that one of their neighbors needs to have a fence repaired. Probably can't do it themselves. So why don't you do it? Well, you never noticed your neighbor who needs a fence repair? Maybe it's somebody three hours down the block, you don't even know them. I don't care. Give. Do unto others as you would have them doing to you. You know, I am so thankful for all the great friends I've got. You know, I spent my whole life helping other people, and now I can't do nothing for myself. And yet, sometimes people come and help me. You know? That's a real blessing when it happens. Um, how about driving into church? Get out of your car, you go over and, hey, Jim, did you know your tail light's out on the left rear side? Or your brake light's out? That's just giving a little piece of information. You know, how many of us check our brake lights and tail lights every week, right? No, probably not. Wouldn't it be nice to know that you need to have that fixed? You know, that's, and that shows I care about you because I want you safe. Give unto others. 
when somebody is driving, you can learn so much about somebody when they're driving. Sure, sure, sure. I talked about this before. Just this morning, I, I saw a, a statistic on the internet. 70% of all people driving on the highway in America at this very moment are speeding. 70%. All right, so let's not get excited about that. Should we be speeding? Well, that's between you and God, okay? But how about this? Letting somebody merge into traffic, well, that's a good thing. What if they aren't a very good driver and don't know how to do it well? Do you get irritated? That's not a godly way to be. How about, um, I was just down in Denver uh, this past weekend, um, Thursday, Friday, and I'm not a fan of big cities. You know one of the things they do in big cities that drives me just just drives me over the edge of my seat. I was on a side street. Wanted to cr turn left onto this major street. Now I know I could, I could have taken a ride and gone around the block or something. Man, I thought about it, but I wasn't in a hurry, so I just sat there. Now I'm three blocks away from the street light. Three blocks to my right is the street light. I figured the light's going to turn red, traffic's going to stop, I'm going to get through. Yep, sure enough, light turned red, traffic stopped right in front of me. Covered the whole intersection, two lanes. I just don't think that's a very Christian thing to do. So I sat there and waited. Light turned red again. Well, it turned green, everyone went. Light turned red. And a truck stopped in, in the lane closest to me so that I could pull out. Traffic in the other lane didn't stop. <laughs> they blocked the whole thing. <clears throat> I just waved at them, said, come on up. Light turns green. Traffic moves, light turns red, traffic stops. The guy in the right lane stopped again. See, there's some good people out there. This time, somebody in the left lane stopped. I went across, no problem. And like I said, I wasn't in a hurry, so it was kind of fun to watch. But you know, it's a sad commentary on our society and how difficult that is, and how many of you are probably sitting here saying, well, what a dummy he is, trying to make a left hand turn right near a red light on a busy street that's got two lanes in each way. Man, you know, I understand where you're coming from. Kind of crazy, I think, because most people are too rude to let you in. But you know what? I find the good people everywhere I go. That's what I'm talking about, people. Practice. You know, practice having patience with yourself. Practice doing little things for other people. All day, every day. And I bet if you practice, then you'll be better at it, whatever it is. That goes for our faith, too. That goes for our faith, too. Now, all of this is really simply just a reminder of what I've already said so many times. But I thought it was worth re-saying again. Practice makes perfect. Speaking of which, God practices his love for us and we should practice sharing that love with others.